we have to start with probably the the biggest news of the week. The the week kicked off really with with the the news of expansion for NWSL. It's coming back to the Bay Area. The NWSL officially announced that they have awarded expansion to the Bay Area. They will become the 14th team in the NWSL in the 2024 season. The team's ownership group, the investment, is really led by Six Street, uh, partnered with four former United States women's national team members, Brandi Chastain, Leslie Osborne, Daniel Slayton, and Allie Wagner. It is a record expansion fee of $53 million, a total $125 million investment for this group coming in. It is an exciting time uh, for California. It is the third California team in just two years uh, to get introduced into the league. And I think now you can look at that uh, very great, very long, large state and say, okay, we've got, uh, we're going to have NWSL markets uh, throughout uh, uh, California. And um, it, we kind of felt like maybe this was going to get announced, you know, sooner rather than later. Um, I am my immediate reaction to this, Lisa. I, it, it threw me all the way back uh, to when you and I had a great conversation with Brandy Chastain and Allie Wagner about all things uh, Bay Area and the possibility of its return uh, to NWSL. And it's official. They're here. <laughs> it is very, very official. Um, this announcement coming early Tuesday morning yesterday, uh, April 4th, and really exciting time. As, as you mentioned, uh, Leslie Osborne, Ali Wagner, uh, Danielle Slayton, um, Brandy Chastain, like these are incredible trailblazers. And yes, they all went to Santa Clara, <laughs> <laughs> the Bay Area. Um, but that's then where they, uh, most of them have decided to settle down and kind of start their lives because that's how much the area means to them. And even when when we talked to uh, Brandy Chastain and Allie Wagner uh, about like eight or nine months ago in June last year, we had them on right when the very small inception of NWSL to the Bay Area became an idea. They talked so much about how they saw Angel City and what they did with multiple investors and how they could start something from the ground up. It didn't have to be um, where a club formerly was, and, and that's how the expansion would happen. They were inspired. They talked to Julie Foudy and, and Julie Ehrman and other investors at Angel City and kind of said, hey, what was your foundation? How did you do this? Because we've got ideas and we want to do this. And it's a very cool and inspiring i think for me that they were able to have this small inception of idea like let's bring professional women's football to the bay area outside of san francisco and now they're able to do it and and to for this to become um the 14th expansion team in the nwsl is also pretty pretty incredible uh for this league to continue to grow and and you talked about the it's pretty much all made possible because of Sixth Street, which is an investment firm. Yeah. And they have a lot of investments in in like so many different sporting things around the world. The Dallas Cowboys, the San Antonio Spurs, I think Real Madrid. Like they touch every single corner of the sporting world. And the fact that they are uh, inspired by the NWSL and women's football in America is it just proves how much it's going to grow. And like, we don't even have to talk about that here because if you like Sandra and I are on the same page and if you listen to us and you join us live, you're already aware that women's soccer is the bomb. So like, you don't need to be convinced of that. But the fact that I think the numbers are very, very interesting because this is $53 million that this team and, and this group, Sixth Street, is spending on this league expansion. Our most recent team to be expanded, Kansas City, $5 million. Yes. That's almost 10 times more money than Kansas City in 2021. And the growth – and like that just shows how lucrative this is and how – The amount of time. You're leaving out the timeline. We're talking like a couple years, like Kansas yeah. City's inclusion into the league. 2021. It was in 2021, and we're we're looking ahead to 2024. So, in just like a two to three year span, to go from five million to, like you said, five over five times that amount, um, it's unreal. It's it's a record breaking moment. Um, I think it sends a certain message to 
really uh, other other markets out there that are interested or even curious about uh, getting a foothold within the league, you better come correct when yeah. you're coming with a bid to this league. It, can't, can't be. It's not. Uh, it's it's not in the single digits anymore. It's in the no, double. exactly. This is. It's a very lucrative project, and it's only going to get more and more um, expensive, right? As the as the year go as the years go on, as the bar is raised for the type of facilities that are needed uh, to have an NWSL team. Um, but with all of this announcements. Uh, Jessica Berman and, and the NWSL actually made their first statement in acknowledging the goal of how many teams the league wants to have. Because um, at the draft in January at, at media availability, they kind of said, yeah, we there's no there's no limit. We don't know. Uh, of course, why reveal your cards that early on? But now that we've got 13 in Utah, 14 in the Bay Area expansion sides, um, they, they put out a statement saying that the NWSL remains engaged in the expansion process with eyes towards adding a 15th team and a 16th team. Um, so that's the first time that we've really heard a goal of 16 expansion sides, which to go from 12 to 16 in, in the matter of years is fantastic because 2024 – We'll see the inclusion of Utah and Bay Area, but um, the fact that they want to get to 16 is fantastic. It's the the NWSL is all over the country. It's amazing. Yeah. And so <laughs> some look, you know, we have the map up right now if you're joining us on, on YouTube and that's what I'm reacting to. But you, you take a look at that literal West Coast all the way up top, starting with the Pacific Northwest and now all the way down through to San Diego. Five teams lining up on the West Coast, but, you know, match that up with uh, with the East Coast as well um, and the possibilities there. And hopefully we get to see some you know, some more teams sprinkled in the middle, you know, just mm -hmm. speaking as a Midwesterner, we'll see. But like I said, like I mentioned already, like these these bids that came in, even for just these these more recent announcements of expansions, right? This this announcement of, of the Bay Area's return comes like just a few weeks after the official return of Utah Royals. Um, and prior to these two announcements, when you and I were in D.C. for the 2022 championship, there was still a lot of chatter um, about expansion. And even then, Commissioner Berman saying, hey, we've got a lot of bids to yeah. go through. We have to comb through them. We have to narrow them down because there's so many. So um, I, I would I would imagine that after this round of expansion and, and them making a specific note in their release about keeping an eye on the future for a possible 15th and 16th team, um, that those conversations took place with with those um, with those markets that presented bids, where it's like if if maybe here's some areas where you need to work on if you want to resubmit a bid in right. the future. But it's an exciting time. I think expansion always you know gets folks excited and re uh, reinvigorated about uh, the league, and it, it does sort of like you you mentioned it was last June that we had this interview with Wagner and Chastain and to just sort of see all this come full circle. It's, it's, it's exciting. And I think the thing, the other remaining things that will come with this announcement, right. I think you're going to look at what is potentially going to be their club name. You know, the, the right. announcement of colors, a crest, you know, all of that kind of stuff, the, the hires that they might make to help navigate and uh, plan and grow a, a roster, you know, the, the, GM role, the head coach role, the coaching staff, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but uh, I think very, you know, targeted kind of smart way to to, to roll out this this investment. Um, former players knowing that they they mm -hmm. needed to make sure that they were partnered with a a, a pretty lucrative and expan uh, expansive yeah. uh, ownership group. So to link up with Six Street investors and then partnered with the national team um, players and and putting out how they are going to have you know, specific members on the board, who's going to represent the governing board. Um, there was a lot of, 
I think they did a good job, I think, within this announcement to answer a lot of those preliminary questions that come from a, a new team. Like who are the faces? Who are who, right. who are the who are the names behind the ownerships groups? Who's gonna have those responsibilities on the governing board, you know, a co-chair, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we've got everything written up for you on dot com. So make sure, you know, when you're looking up your your NWSL news, you check out CBS yeah. Sports uh, uh, com and uh, you can get all that information. We, we break it down by the ownership group. You can see who's involved in it and uh, a little bit of the history too, because that is where my reaction went to as well. I was like, wow, like it's coming back. The Bay Area has typically been a part of uh, the previous uh women's professional soccer leagues that have existed uh in 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 this country whether it was wusa or wps i'm rocking my cyber way my yes. cyber race scarf right now on the wall um just because i was just so excited uh to just for for the announcement very excited for the players who've been yeah. uh, who've been attached to the project you know and uh, have been and working towards getting this moment and getting this decision announced um it's, and it's so exciting and it's so fast honestly it's so <laughs> fast because january 2024 is when players a yeah. team coach will report to the bay yep. area for preseason that is less than a year. 2024 away. is next, literally next year. <laughs> literally next January. Next January is when the players will report. So, like, there's a lot to do. There's a lot to do between now and then. The fact that it's getting announced in April, um, th three weeks into the NWSL season, and and these investors, they, everyone involved has to, they've got to pick it up now. I mean, there's a lot of work to come of them. And, and they talked about it. They had press conferences yesterday about this and they knew that they want to build from the ground up and man, it starts today. Get the hammer and nail out because January, 2024 is going to come very fast. <laughs> and we'll have all sorts of updates for everyone oh, yeah. along the way and our reactions to it, of course.